but it was that could maybe manifest in um, them having like a, um, a psychic connection to other people on the other parts of the planet. Absolutely, and this idea of a near-death experience, you know, it's just a phrase that's becoming common now, but, uh, you know, th there's nothing sacred to the idea of an NDE. These have been happening for, you know, for the millennial, and, uh, you know, the, the, the idea, though, is that there's a new consciousness there that you've never tapped before. It threw you for a loop, basically. The average near-death experiencer takes seven years to really right themselves after their events. That's one way you can tell that how the impact is real on them. They really you know, their lives can really go into chaos after the NDE because it blows their paradigm of reality so badly that it, it takes that long to get back on their feet. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. Next up, let's go to our first-time caller line. You're on the air with us. Welcome to the show. Hi there. Hello, George. Hi. Hi, I wanted to ask your guest the question. Um, I want to know if he believes in uh, an, an ET connection between the Aztec calendar and their... Uh, their seemingly mysterious knowledge of astronomical predictions. Well, well, yes, in the sense that I think that we probably were helped uh, tens of thousands of years ago to to really uh, you know get on our feet, so to speak, as a species. And uh, in fact, some people who've had near death experiences have told me that uh, you know they have met um, just unlimited life forms in that hyperdimensional space. Uh, one's a Christian minister now, Reverend Howard Storm. I feature in my book. He said it's endless. He said the entire cosmos is full of life. Period, and uh, that we will be starting to connect with these at least telepathically in the very near future. I believe them. Oh, thanks a lot. That really helps. Okay, let us uh, go to Dennis in Philadelphia. You're on with us. Hey, Dennis. Hi. How you doing? We're great. Thanks. Um, well, I don't know where to start. I just want to say hello, John J. Harper. Um, Good morning. Thank you. And um, I have morning. You know. Um, I know I can speak on that as well, but there's a lot of things I have to speak of. But what I would like to ask for your guidance on something. Um, you know, I'm, I was involved in an auto accident in 1999 uh, where my aorta was torn. And um, I survived that. And now in 2006, I got myself together. And uh, I went to college. And uh, now I'm about to receive my undergraduate degree, which I started, I began in 96. And um, what I'd like to ask you is if I'd like to become a naturopathic doctor. I have your book in front of me right now, uh, Transformers. Yes. And um, I haven't had a chance to read it, sir. Um, I'll be honest. But what I'd like to say is, uh, you know, I would like to head towards naturopathic, um, become a doctor, because I just don't feel like I can handle the schoolwork uh, with the master's degree in social work. Uh-huh, uh, uh-huh. I'm familiar with all of these curriculums, so yeah, I'd be glad to help you real quick if I can. What What's on your mind? Um, well, to be honest, uh, just I've been struggling with uh, my family issues, and I like to heal those with addictions because I healed myself uh, through it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, I just, you know, basically, I would like help, you know, for guidance, just, you know, I would like to go through a school, and I just want to know that this is a real thing. And um, I believe it just... um. You know, I, I don't know, you know. I don't know what I'm asking for right now. It's just um, I first want to say hello um, to people on Pal Talk. Uh, it's, my name on there is I See Truth. Now, I didn't take that name because I believe in I, I believe in the third eye that sees truth. Mm -hmm. And um, I believe I'm in touch with that. And I came across Coast to Coast because in 99 I survived that injury. And for some reason I was brought on to Coast to Coast and I've been living or listening ever since. Well, you absolutely have a purpose with that kind of testimony. There's no doubt about it. You just continue to meditate on uh, your future. You'll get guidance. Everything happens for a reason, John J. Harper. Yes, sir. Everything, I believe. You betcha. There are connections throughout. And, uh, you know, what is the force, though? You know, it, it, I know we could be spiritual about it, but w what is it? Yeah. It's a feeling of being alive and it's synchronicity. It's this this unending mystery that we're all involved in where we keep finding a little breadcrumb here and a breadcrumb there and a piece of the puzzle comes together for us and we give meaning to it. But it's a wonderful journey, so we need to reflect on that too. We're not necessarily focused on the destination at the moment. Let's enjoy the journey. And the journey is half the battle right there too, isn't it? Yes, it is. 
Okay, let's go next to our wild card line. Steve in Indiana, you're on the air with us. Hey, Steve, go ahead. Hi, George. How are you? Good. We're great. Thanks. Glad to hear that. Uh, John J. Harper, yes, I'd like for you to try to explain a, an incident that happened to me. Um, about this time last year, actually June the 9th, uh, I went into a diabetic coma, and I was in that coma for 59 days. And I had a um, sepsis uh, attack my my foot and went right up my leg, and they had to take my whole leg off. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, I, I didn't even know this occurred. I, again, I was in a coma mm-hmm. for 59 days. But since I came out of that coma and got out of the hospital, which I was, believe it or not, I was in the hospital seven months, um, and, and I'm now walking with a prosthetic and so on. But I have had the strangest recurring dream, and I'll tell you what it is. Uh, I see a gentleman high up in government like the CIA or FBI, and this gentleman is selling secrets to the red Chinese, and he's telling them the way to defeat America is not firing one single missile. All you have to do is blind their satellites with laser beams, and you'll shut down all communication, all telephone communications, all defense systems, all missile defense systems, and and you've got them on the ropes right there. And I keep seeing this same dream over and over and over, and it keeps repeating itself, and it's it's really driving me bats. And um, I'm beginning to think that someone somewhere somehow is trying to show me something that's really maybe in our future. Well, my my impression of that is that you're seeing some – very valid information. Our military is quite aware of that scenario. And, and quite vulnerable there. And quite vulnerable. And uh, it's absolutely valid what you're seeing. In fact, uh, the real quick of this is uh, one of my near-death experiencers that I feature in my book, uh, Ned Doherty, uh, formerly in New York City, now living in Pennsylvania, I understand. But um, Ned was shown the same thing many years ago, that one of the big concerns we'll have at the time of the major earth change events, the geophysical events, will be China. That's a real potential. Um, Things could really go sour quick if we lost our high technology and we had a major disaster, for example, at the military ports on the west or east coast in the form of a tsunami. Yes, sir. Well, sir, you kind of validated some of what I've been experiencing here. Um, And one, one other quick incident I'd like to mention. Um, 35 years ago, I was traveling from Lexington, Kentucky to Louisville, Kentucky with a supervisor of mine, and we indeed saw a UFO. And this UFO came down real low to the ground. It was the size of a football field. And uh, George and John, it had the most blinding, eye-piercing, red, blue, and green strobing lights I've ever seen in my life. I've never seen colors like that. And, and nor did my supervisor that I was with. We were just stunned. We, we we were in shock. Now, here comes the real kicker. We lost 59 minutes traveling back to Louisville, Kentucky, that we could not account for. And he and I both are afraid to go get hypnotized for, for fear of what they, they may yeah. tell us. But, but yeah. sir, I mean, uh, I, I'm serious with you. I sure, I understand, and I can sense it in your voice, and I can, I can I, tell you that, and, of course, George could go on, too, and, and educate both of us on the stories he's heard, but the time distortion is a common theme in uh, alien abduction phenomenon that Dr. John Mack at Harvard University did years ago. But, yeah, the idea that when we're in the presence of this higher vibration energy, this ether or hyperspatial physics uh, realm, we do absolutely have problem maintaining a level of consciousness within us. And, again, that's what I mean by practice practicing these higher states uh, in a safe environment because we are going to be, in my opinion, we're going to come confront this at some point in our evolution. We're going to be in the presence of beings that absolutely will basically absorb our consciousness because we cannot stand that higher vibrational rate. Okay, let's go to you, John, in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Thanks for holding, John. Oh, thank you. Sure. Nice to, nice to hear from you guys again. Or nice to be able to talk to you guys again. Um, I was wanting to say, uh, John Jay, uh, you mentioned being a Scotsman, a Scotchman, yes, and and living in um, Native American territory, like you were living. Did you know that Scotland used to have, or um, the UK in general, used to have a, a very 
powerful shamanic 